Hey then, welcome to After Work. My name is Valentine and in this video we're going to be talking about becoming a data scientist within the NGO sector or the non-profit sector. So we'll talk about some of the responsibilities or tasks that they're meant to do. Um, we'll talk about the goals um, generally. Um, we'll also talk about the deliverables that they're meant to achieve. Um, we'll talk about some requirements that um, would be necessary if you wanted to become a data scientist within the sector and lastly we'll talk about some key roles or uh, just general roles or roles that you might end up um, seeing whenever you are applying for data science jobs within the non-profit sector all right so let's begin so as a data scientist within the ngo sector um, the main goal that you're going to be having would be to discover, interpret, and communicate information um, found in um, structured and unstructured um, data sets. And this would be basically uh, what you would actually end up doing in, you know, if you are working also in other different sectors. But now the ultimate goal here would be to create impactful reports as well as dashboards that would inform um, stakeholders within the NGO or um, the non-profit sector. Some of the responsibilities or tasks that you might end up undertaking would be to source, organize, process um, and model data. Um, you might end up you know, essentially identifying trends. If you're, you're processing data, you might um, identify trends that are important within the work that you're currently um, performing and that might involve to identify say um, the patterns or behavior patterns of donors who would you know all many of them usually have different um, sorts of behavior some of them tend to fund projects uh, geared towards a certain cause while others uh, um, do um, that um, for other projects that are geared towards different causes so your goal would be to help the organization that you're working with to be able to solve for the problems that they currently face in particular the social problems that or even um, basically social problems that many organizations um, normally face a good example of such kinds of work might be you could end up performing some sort of study in order to determine say communities that need some sort of intervention in the near future due to a foreseen um, event it could be a natural disaster or some devastating event um, maybe floods or um, famine, etc. Um, in some other cases, it might be um, just being able to, as, as, as a data scientist, be able to help the organization monitor and be able to organize, administer effective implementation of different solutions for the internal operations of the organizations. This might be um, how to. Um, um, possibly maximize cost effectiveness and also um, efficient allocation of resources across different departments um, and 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 for many many particular um, data scientists their work would be to develop say um, dashboards that inform those relevant stakeholders to ensure that whatever that has been foreseen or has been um, asked by a donor is being implemented um, in terms of deliverables, uh, there are different kinds of deliverables that you might end up achieving and these could be reports, uh, could be dashboards, it could be models and it could even be just presentation documents that provide solutions or provide insights into a particular problem that you're solving. In order to become a data scientist within this sector, you need to have some tertiary requirements, maybe a bachelor's or master's in statistics, mathematics, informatics, or computer science, or a related field. You also need to have uh, some experience in working um, with large data sets, and at the same time, also some just statistical or just basically analytics experience pertaining to humanitarian projects. That way you can show that you have the necessary skills that are required to solve the problems that those organizations normally face. 
Other general data science skills that you would require are data collection skills, um, maybe how to collect data uh, from database management systems, it could be maybe SQL, um, and also how to work with data collection um, tools such as Kobo Toolbox or other um, popular tools that are normally used by NGOs to collect data. Exploration and also um, cleaning uh, as well as modeling, you might need to learn um, how at the basic level to learn how to work with Excel as well as um, either Python or R um, in an effort to ensure that you're efficiently performing some of the required data analysis work. So roles, um, quite a number of many organizations usually have different um, ways they usually term data scientists and some of them term them as data analysts, others as data scientists, others as BI analysts, others as data management officers um, or just data managers um, who, who works with a data team um, that might comprise of data officers or even data analysts. And in some, some, in some organizations, they may not necessarily dedicate all that work to one person. They would divide it or subdivide it to, across um, um, other professionals who might be working towards other aspects of the organization. Um, maybe they could um, um, provide or delegate that work, data analysis work, to a monitoring and evaluation officer. So basically, yeah, so that's, that's it with regards to um, some of the aspects pertaining to data scientists um, within this particular sector and um, Hopefully you did get some idea of what the kinds of work that they usually work towards um, entail and if you did um, like this video um, and If you did get this, some value from this video be sure to give this video a thumbs up and If you'd want to be informed when we post such future videos be sure to subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye.